Hello there, you wonderful uh, Planet Zoo fans! I'm back from Gamescom, it's Monday evening, and you guys ask for it, I'll deliver. Here I am with the new video. This is my speed build of my Saturday livestream, so if you don't want to watch two and a half hours, well actually three hours of footage, uh, which I can totally understand, um, here is it for you, uh, ten times sped up. We are going through my build of the tropical greenhouse, and I'm going to talk to you through a little bit of my thoughts, a little bit of the, the game itself, uh, stuff I couldn't really talk about while doing it because you know being live in this crazy sauna over there because it's been so freaking hot uh, is is yeah it's just insane also I can't really put my face away so you have to deal with my fail through uh, fail face throughout the whole episode uh, just because um, it's there and I can't cut it because it's literally the footage of my stream um, the idea about this tro tropical house was not only to to build this because it looks nice it looks nice though but uh, it's mainly because I wanted to test how the game treats everything with indoor areas and I can already tease you that the game is just handling it insanely well. Like even better than everything we have thought before of. Um, the other things uh, I wanted to see if, if you work with coolers and heaters, if they do consider buildings to be a thing. Because, you know, they do have a kind of radius and uh, the radius affects what's going to be warm or cold. But the cool thing is, even houses are providing a general amount of heat or coldness, coolness, coolness, that's the word I was looking for, um, in, in summer and winter, which is pretty cool because they kind of do shadows and stuff. Um, but also it was important to see for me how the game handles like uh, the shadows when you're using that many glass pieces as I'm doing over here building that dome. It kind of was a challenge for the game, I guess, to process all that stuff. Also, I wanted to test uh, if the game is handling the building with, um, you know, you know, you know, you guys know how I build. I don't use less pieces. Don't ask me. I, I always use too many pieces. That's the, the thing I do, right? And you guys would be mad if I won't. So, yeah, obviously I tried to build a gigantic house and I'm, I'm quite... Uh, happy to say it has been huge. Aliyah, that's one for you. So, um, I think there's not much more I need to say about that building in general because it's definitely uh, one, you know, a hell of a, a big greenhouse. But the thing is, I also wanted to connect the uh, backstage area a little bit because what the game really showed us while we've been playing that on, on the floors of the Gamescom, that there's a lot of management going into it. So even if you're going to consider uh, only building your wonderful uh, sandbox parks, they will only work if you do spend a lot of time into really placing your facility buildings well. And this is why I will be in a later stage of this uh, uh, speed lab, speed labs, speed build, time lapse, whatever. It's the speed speed labs. Um, you will see that I will place all the backstage buildings right next to this dome to make sure that people can enter it. If I wouldn't have put my entrance in a completely damn bad position, it would have worked just as a charm. But I was doing things wrong here. Anyhow, so you can see that I'm placing quite a few of trees uh, in front of the building. And let me just tell you, the foliage available in this game is just insane. Oh, here we go. By the way, this is something I do need to mention. This is the biggest mistake I made over here. So I wanted to have this gate door, uh, gate door of this enclosure a little bit towards the um, whole area and then I wanted to cover it up with the building, uh, with the rocks over here. However, that was my biggest mistake because in the moment one of the animals is going to climb over those rocks, the game considers them to be out of the enclosure, which effect uh, effectively leads to the fact that the zookeepers are going to get them, shoot them, like don't worry, they, they're not going to kill them, they're only going to tranquilize them and then they bring them back into the enclosure, which they wouldn't need to do because effectively the animal couldn't escape because it's still in that building. So when you consider building stuff like that, you will definitely have to put these gates, uh, I guess uh, kind of stuff gates, also really to the outside of the enclosure. It doesn't really make too much of a difference though because you can still make a little bit of a backstage path because the zookeepers are also able to interact with the scenery. So they won't th uh, clip through the rocks. They will take that little tunnel you have uh, I've built there. So there was no need for me to put that door um, in this position that I just did. But this is just me with my old Planet Coaster thinking that the, the AI of the staff members is only working with the path, which clearly isn't. Uh, because I don't know if you've seen the lady design this live stream. If you haven't, I really recommend to check that out because she tested um, how an island works. And uh, the fun thing is that not only animals can climb over locks 
actually zookeepers do also take the locks as a bridge to get to the island which is insane if you ask me because not only that they do interact with the pieces available they actually consider them to be a path towards their target which uh, to be fair I haven't even dreamed of that Frontier is going to implement that I literally haven't thought of it well I have thought of it but I, I honestly didn't believe they would do it but they did so uh, one of those many many surprises that the games come uh, but yeah I think the biggest surprise for me was how well the game treats this kind of enclosure build over here because as you can see I'm just building this gigantic dome out of single pieces this is everything is built hand uh, made just piece by piece and you know the the game has to process quite a few things here to make this happen because not only that I just put some stuff together it's not only that I put all the pieces together that are in the menu, I also use pieces that are not really meant to be used that way, as I always do, you know. I, I used windows as walls and I used some pillars as kind of uh, overhanging uh, structures and stuff like that. So the game uh, really needs to treat every single item as a different item once you use it in a different way. And let me tell you, it does work out pretty damn well. I have no idea why, but yeah, as you can see, I'm putting the invisible fence now in here, and this is my second big mistake. I should have put the fence way outside of the building, because that moment an animal is crossing this imaginary border over here, the game considers them to be um, breaking out of the enclosure. So again, they are not really this area over here, the last bit next to the door you have seen is my biggest pain in the ass because this is literally the area where I couldn't really make it work because all the time an animal was just literally just touching it ever so slightly. The game was like, no, 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 it left the enclosure, we need to shoot it, oh my god. So yeah, I don't know. Anyways, a second really, really great addition is that you can, as you can see, I use the um, indoor exhibits here, or actually the small exhibits with an anaconda and also with the giant goliath spider, I guess, or was it the poison frog? I'm not entirely sure which one it was, but um, I did use them. And the cool thing about this is that uh, you can place them inside an enclosure or inside one habitat. So that means you have you can have basically a habitatception, if you will. So you can put multiple habitats together, which is super awesome because that may, may oh, sorry that means that you can build kind of um, structures that you would basically only see in a zoo. So for example, I know that a lot of people want to have the peafowls uh, roaming around your zoo, which technically you can do. You can just build a, a really, really great habitat around your zoo and then just use the invisible fences and make sure that the invisible fences are basically outside of every reachable area and then you can just plop every animal inside your zoo that you want to have. But the problem though will be that um, guests won't act, interact with uh, dangerous animals so they won't even get into your park but as long as you use animals that the guests are just likely to see on path and in the enclosures it's no big deal actually so if you want to have your peafowl wandering around your zoo just make sure that your whole zoo is one single habitat and you can still place multiple habitats within that one uh, which makes then the peafowl wandering around the only issue though is and this is why you might want to consider this to be only a thing in sandbox um, your animal won't ever be happy because literally you would need to make your whole zoo then um, according to this one animal. So if you have the peafowl in the zoo and the peafowl needs like let's say 15% of soil then the whole zoo needs to be 15% made out of soil which effectively leads, leads to the fact that all the other enclosures can't really be uh, that nicely done for those animals as well because they need a lot of different stuff and you know what I mean. So as soon as you have like a snowy enclosure for example the peafowl would be like uh, you know what I don't want snow, you know, this is not nice for me. So I think it's kind of a little bit of a trade-off and I hope that we kind of get the chance to maybe get some animals we can just disable the uh, needs as we could do for example in uh, Jurassic World Evolution. Um, just for the sake of realism and for the sake of sandbox mode, I think that would be very cool to have. However, you can see that I was placing like a multiple plants inside the dome um, also to see how this will later on um, interact with the weather. So the cool thing is I can already tell you it does look awesome because you even get some mist effects within uh, the habitat even though it's rainy outside. Uh, you get this little bit of foggy inside area which is so super cool. Yeah, as you can see this is now me trying to fix my fence issue. I should have just put that whole fence like uh, one or two meters off the boundaries because you can si can't see it anyways. I could have just made this so much bigger like seriously so so much bigger. Um, then again 
I just left this in because it's cutting was basically pen in the ass. Uh, you can see that I'm sending all my little baby wolves here uh, to the trade center because while I was building, I've I just didn't notice that the uh, contraception doesn't work in the alpha build, so my wolves kept on being rabbits, um, which led to a overpopulation in the wolf exhibit, which made them. Ah, not that happy. So yeah, as you can see, I was still purchasing quite a few lemurs here. Uh, I just wanted to make it really crowdy in here and then I also put some giant tortoises in um, to make sure that we have a little bit of variation in here and also to test if we can have multiple uh, animals within that dome, which we can have. So as you can see, this dome is now containing in, in a total of five different species. No, actually four um, and multiple animals. So we have the lemurs, we have the tortoise, we have the yellow anaconda and we have the poisoned frog. I guess it was the poisoned frog, uh, but yeah. So since uh, one of our animals, which is the lemur, needs a climbing uh, frame, I'm going to build this here. And let me just quickly talk about the climbing frame itself. So the cool thing is you can build every Everything piece by piece and the animals will interact with it but that doesn't mean that they only interact with those pieces they interact basically with every piece the only difference is that there are some pieces that need to be in there to fulfill the climbing needs so let's say your animal needs um, a total of 20 square meters climbing that means you will have to put in 20 square meters of those climbing the dedicated climbing pieces to make the game recognize that this is the climbing frame however if you're done with this you can basically use everything else to, as, as a good climbing uh, utility and they will use it so that's basically it yeah now you can see already the the rain is pouring down and the cool bit is even guests coming inside they are putting away their umbrellas I mean, how cool is that? This is so good. So people not only recognize that this is indoor, they also just put away the umbrellas and I just, I'm just so happy that it works that way. Yeah, this is now the, um, I don't know what he's doing here. I just love the fact that he was just staring to the glass and I don't know what he did. Um, but anyways, so I was putting down a whole lot of staff members because at this point in time, I didn't really know what exactly caused the issues of uh, my tortoises starving and my uh, lemurs escaping. So I just figured it later on when Sylv took the park. It's a little bit of a shame. Um, some of the things didn't really work out in the alpha. So for example, I was filtering um, the uh, food sources for my animals and I was putting in the tortoise and it gave me the option to use that little food plate. However, this was the wrong one. So if I was going into the menu again back later, I was figuring while clicking on the items, the actual item for the food was a different one. So this is why my tortoises kept starving. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of an unfortunate event here. Uh, then I also didn't really know why my uh, lemurs were keeping, you know, to escape. But yeah, you can see this is now the most insane look of how it's snowing outside. And then in the inside, it's still everything is nice. Here you can see the heat, how it is processed in the game. So the game really recognizes that this is like indoors and you can have your indoor area like just fine. As you can see, I was putting in the sun again and it, it, the, the fog kept going away and yeah. All this kind of stuff is just so freaking amazing. I just can't tell you how much I love this game. Uh, it, feeling the game actually in-game or like feeling it to play in-game is, is so enormously great. You can see that I'm trying to build some more shed options over here because the problem is that um, you also need to consider that your animals don't want to be seen the whole time. So the one thing that you really need to focus on is also that they have enough cover from people. And when, once you're building a kind of exhibit I, like, like I did here, you really ran into some issues that your animals are too much on display. So people see them too much. So my planning in this one, also given the limited time I had, was really poor. So I was just trying to fix those issues by putting down some very poorly planned uh, little covers here and there. But actually for the lemurs, this, this worked pretty well. However, the, the protesters just came in to protest how bad I treat my animals. Uh, as you can see, um, yeah, the tortoises also did their bit for it. Uh, but yeah, I was just deleting some of the plans to make sure there's some more space. I put some more staff members in, but that's already it for the time lapse. The dome is built. I will now include three screenshots of rainy, of sunny, and of uh, snow, so you can see how this building looked in the end. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of uh, talking you through the speed build and how this all was created in way quicker than the whole live stream. And I hope to see you in the next Planet Zoo video. Until then, let me know all your feedback and all your questions, and I'll try to answer as much as possible, as many as possible in the comments down below. So see you next time and have a great day guys. Bye!
So thank you for watching this video. I hope you appreciate that. And now a special thanks also to all the people supporting me here on that channel, making this all possible. You can see that on the left hand side right now. And also if you want to see more of my stuff, make sure to click that card on the right top now. And if you want to stick around, make sure to hit that sub button, which is on the bottom right of the screen. If you want to see stuff on my social media, sneak peeks and stuff like that, it is on the bottom left on the screen. And yeah, I hope to see you again in the next episode. Until then, enjoy your time guys. And bye.